Time for this week's drama on three. Blindness by Jose Saramago, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1998. It's a book that's been described as a shattering work by a literary master, and this radio adaptation by Matt Thompson, based on the translation by Giovanni Pontiero, has remained faithful to the violence of emotions and scenes of the original story. Josefina Gabriel plays the doctor's wife in Blindness by Jose Saramago. If you can see, look. If you can look, observe. Just get me home, please. I'll be all right. Don't worry. I'll drive you to your home. Come, come with me. The key. I can't see. What do you mean? It's, it's like a mist has fallen, and I'm caught in it. I, or I've fallen into a milky sea. But blindness is black. I see white. That woman who spoke just now is probably right. It's a matter of nerves. Nerves can be the very devil. Let's get you home. I can't thank you enough. Don't, I don't have the words. Don't give it another thought. Help! Help! You're all right. We're just crossing the road. Would you like me to help you open the door? Thanks. That's something I can do. I can do for myself. It must be this one. How can I thank you? No need to thank me. Do you want me to help you to get settled and keep you company until your wife arrives? There's no need. Please don't bother. I'm fine. Are you home? Oh damn it! He fell asleep and dreamt at once that he was pretending to be blind. Beneath this reassuring certainty, he perceived, nevertheless, the dull nagging of uncertainty. Perhaps it was a deceptive dream. What are you doing there, sleeping with those flowers on your lap? You might have cleaned up this mess yourself instead of settling down to sleep. How did this happen? I'm blind. I can't see. Stop playing silly games. I wish it were a joke. The truth is, I really am blind. I can't see anything. Please don't frighten me. Look, look at me here. I'm here. The light is on. I know you're there. I can hear you, touch you. I can imagine you've switched the light on, but I'm blind. It isn't true. Tell me that it isn't true. I see everything white. No one goes blind from one minute to the next. Pay attention. I'm going to switch off the light, and you can tell me nothing. What do you mean, nothing? I see everything white. It's as if there were no night. Where's the car keys? He's got them. Who's he? He never gave them back to me. The man who drove me back. Use your keys. Wait here. Don't be long. That good Samaritan of yours. That good soul. He's taken our car. It isn't possible. You can't have looked properly. Of course I look properly. There's nothing wrong with my eyesight. Sorry. Let's go. We're for taxi waiting. I'd give a year of my life to see that woman go blind as well. We rang. 
Just take a seat through there. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Who's waiting? There's a cross-eyed young boy with a squint. He's about eight. That's probably his mother sitting next to him. Very attractive. Jet black hair, dark glasses, pretty skirt. There's an old man, maybe in his 70s. He's got an eye patch over his right eye. Come on! Come on! Let's have a look at these eyes, then. No diabetes? No. Blindness in the family? No. Syphilis? No. See, everything will be sorted out. Rest your chin here. That's it. Nothing in the cornea. Nothing in the sclera. Nothing in the luteus macula. Nothing elsewhere. I can't find any lesions. Your eyes are perfect. Didn't I tell you? Your blindness at this moment defies explanation. Do you not believe that I'm blind? I've never come across anything like it, and I dare say no such case has ever been known in the entire history of ophthalmology. Do you think there's a... do you think there's a cure? My reply should be in the affirmative. But apparently it's not in the affirmative. Only because I don't want to build up hopes that may turn out to be unjustified. For the moment, I'd prefer not to prescribe anything. It would be like prescribing in the dark. An apt expression. Call me if there's any change. We'll have to do further tests. Like most people, I often played as a child at pretending to be blind. I'd keep my eyes closed for five minutes. I even reached a conclusion that the darkness in which the blind live was nothing other than the simple absence of light. That what we call blindness was something that simply covered the appearance of beings and things, leaving them intact behind a black veil. Now on the contrary, here am I, plunged into a whiteness so luminous, so total, that it swallows up rather than absorbs, not just the colours, but the very things and beings, thus making them twice as invisible. That night I dreamt I was blind. Why did I steal it? When all said and done, there's not all that much difference between helping a blind man only to rob him afterwards and looking after some tottering and stammering old person with one eye on the inheritance. I didn't help the poor bastard to steal it. That's an important distinction. While trying to cross himself, the blind man only succeeded in breaking his own nose. Careful. He looked through this windscreen and suddenly could no longer see. I'm getting off the street. Now. Just because that poor wretch turned blind is no reason why... This isn't some gold you catch. There are a thousand reasons why the brain should close up. Like a late visitor finding his own door shut. A thick, uniform, white colour as if he had plunged with open eyes into a milky sea. Good night. What's this? I can no longer see my hands. Waiting, but not for long. I'm waiting to meet somebody I've known for a long time. No, I don't need dark glasses. It's silly. I've got some conjunctivitis and the doctor has given me some drops, but um, didn't seem very serious. I sleep with men for money. I suppose some people might call me a prostitute, but 
I want to, you know, I choose. If I don't like them, I won't do it. I enjoy myself, you know, I have a nice time. And now I'm waiting to meet an old acquaintance, savoring an expectation, if the term is appropriate, about to be crucified. I'm going to bed. I hope this night Good will night. never end, rather than have to announce. A man whose profession was to cure ailments in the eyes of others. I'm blind. But at the same time, I'm anxiously waiting for the light of day. <sighs> now I understand their fear. When they tell me... Doctor, I think I'm losing my sight. Good morning. I doubt it. There's something wrong with my sight. I can't see anything. I, I can't see. I must have been infected by the patient I saw yesterday. What? Keep away. Don't come near me. I might infect you. What a fool! We've spent the entire night together. Leave me. No, I won't leave you. Take my arm. Yes, yes. I I'm fine. Director, yes. It's me. I I'll start at the beginning. Totally. Does the boy have a squint? In a hotel? With a man? Where's he? Gone. Was she wearing dark glasses? Yes. Hello, this is the Minister speaking. On behalf of the government, I wish to thank you for your prompt action. We shall be able to limit and control the situation. Meanwhile, would you please do us the favour of remaining indoors? Who was that? The Ministry. An ambulance is coming to fetch me in the next half hour. Pack a suitcase. I'm not going on a trip. We don't know what it is. Who knows how long we'll be separated. Don't let it worry you. Yeah. In you get. Lift your leg here. That's it. Madam, these are my orders. I can only take him. I can't take you. I've got to ask you to get down. You'll have to take me as well. I've just gone blind. In you go. You're the first. Move to your right. Bit further. Bit further. That thick rope. It's like a handrail. Fall it up and it'll take you to the steps. That's right. Yeah. There's six the step steps. Okay. Once inside, the rope okay. divides into two. One strand going to the left, the other to the right. Now, you keep to the right. Stay here, I'm going to look around. There are rows of beds, wards, long and narrow corridors, doctor's rooms, dingy latrines, a kitchen that still reeks of bad cooking, a vast refectory with zinc-top tables, three rooms which can be locked. In them, the bottom six feet of the walls have padding, and the rest is lined with cork. Behind the building, there's an abandoned yard with neglected trees. The trunks look like they've been flayed. Litter everywhere. In a half-open cupboard, straitjackets. Can you imagine where they've brought us? No. You're not blind. Yes, you're right. I can't allow you to stay here. And I'm going to ask them to take you home. To tell them that you told a lie in order to remain with me. There's no point. They can't hear you through here. Even if they could, they'd pay no attention. I shall almost certainly go blind myself one of these days. Please. Or any minute now. Go home. No, my love. 
I'm staying here to help you, and the others who may come here. But don't tell them I can see. What others? Well, you don't think we'll be here on our own, do you? This is madness. What did you expect? Mummy, mummy. It's okay. She's coming. She'll come. Four more have arrived. A woman, two men, and a boy. What do they look like? The child has a squint, and the girl is wearing dark glasses. She seems attractive. Hello. It's two of us. How many are you? I think there are four of us. Myself, this little boy, and、hmm. who else? I'm here. Attention! 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 The government regrets having been forced to exercise with all urgency what it considers to be its rightful duty to protect the population by all possible means in this present crisis, provisionally known as the White Sickness. The decision to gather together in one place all those infected was not taken without careful consideration. Bearing in mind that the isolation in which they now find themselves will represent, above any personal considerations, an act of solidarity with the rest of the nation's community. First, the lights will be kept on at all times. Second, leaving the building without authorization will mean instant death. Three times daily, containers with food will be deposited at the main door. Seventh, all the leftovers must be burnt. Tenth. In the event of a fire getting out of control, whether accidentally or on purpose, the firemen will not intervene. Eleventh, equally, the internees cannot count on any outside intervention in the event of any disorder or aggression. Fifteenth, this communication will be relayed daily at the same time for the benefit of all new arrivals. The government and nation expect every man and woman to do their duty. Good night. Mummy. We're probably more isolated than anyone has ever been. I recognise your voice. You must be the doctor I consulted yesterday. Yes. I recognise your voice. And who are you? I've been suffering from conjunctivitis. Is the man who suddenly went blind when out driving his car here? That's me. Anyone else? We're obliged to live here together for who knows how long. Therefore, it's essential that we should get to know each other. Yes, yes. You're not the elderly man with the eye patch. No, doctor, that's not me. I was about to ask if his blindness was also white, but stopped myself in time. Why bother? Whatever his reply, he would not get out of this place. The tight mouth. Those dead eyes, like glass, terrifying because they appear to see, do not see. My time will come too. Doctor, why don't you take charge of the ward? After all, you are a doctor. What good's a doctor without eyes or medicines? This fellow's to blame for our misfortune. I fired my eyesight. I do him in. Keep calm. No one's to blame in an epidemic. Everyone's a victim. If I hadn't been the decent fellow I am, if I hadn't helped him to find his way home, I'd still have my precious eyes. You took me home, it's true, but then you took advantage of my condition to steal That's my car. That's a lie. I didn't steal anything. You most certainly did. If anyone nicked your car, it wasn't me. My reward for carrying out a kind action was to lose my sight. Besides, where are the witnesses? That's what I'd like to know. If your idea is to turn this place into a hell, then you're going about it in the right way. You stole my car. All right, I stole your car, but you stole my eyesight. So who's the bigger thief? That's enough. Now listen to me, doctor. We're all equal here, and you don't give me any orders. I'm not easy to handle when somebody gets up my nose. Otherwise, I'm as good a friend as you're likely to meet. I want to do a wee wee. Me too.、Oh, shit! Where do you have to go to piss in this place? Watch your language. Certainly, sweetheart. But unless you can find a lavatory, it won't be long before your little boy has pee running down his legs. Perhaps I can find the toilets. 
I remember smelling them. I'll come with you. Come on. It's best that we should all go. Then we shall know the way whenever we need to go. What he doesn't want is that his little wife should have to take me to pee every time I feel the urge. Form a single file. My wife will lead the way. You can count me out. I'm off to another ward. He claims he turned blind because of me. Well, let him stay blind. Get off. At least it shows there's some justice Get in this world. Off. I tripped. Oh dear. I seem to have given someone a bit of a kick. I'm injured. This bitch doesn't look where she's putting her feet. And you don't look where you're putting your hands. I can feel blood. That's not good. That's nasty. Where's the wound? Here. Here. Where? Oh, my leg. Can't you see? This the bitch. bastard was touching me up. Who does he think I am? This wound should be washed and dressed at once. And where's water? I really want to do a wee. There's a kitchen somewhere. I can't be left like this, Doctor. The bleed won't stop. Please help me. Forgive me if I was rude to you a short time ago. Take off your vest. We'll use that. Poor lad. He couldn't hold out. Oh, it's throbbing so badly. It's as if my heart has changed position and lying at the bottom of some hole. There's a smell of urine here. How did you lose your sight? Like everyone else. Suddenly I could no longer see. Were you at home? More or less. I went blind the moment my husband got into the ambulance. And that was lucky. For whom? Your husband. That way you can stay together. Are you married? No. No, I'm not. I don't think there will be any more marriages now. But this blindness is so alien. It can't last forever. And suppose we were to stay like this for the rest of our lives? Us. Everyone. I'm back. I'm hungry. Tomorrow, we'll find something to eat. Now go to sleep. I'll open my eyes after ten. Is it dawn I can see through my eyelids? Or another luminous presence? A milky sea? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Open your eyes. Do it! The dull, bluish light at dawn. How are you feeling? Bad. My leg's very painful. The skin is dry and hot. The shadowy forms of others beneath the grey blankets. The grimy walls. The empty beds waiting to be occupied. I wish I too could turn blind to penetrate the visible skin of things and pass to their side, the inner side, to dazzling and irreversible blindness. Keep calm. No need to rush. There are six of us here. How many are you? I don't know. I'm a policeman. He too knows that names are of no importance here. I'm a hotel maid. I'm a taxi driver. I work in a chemist. I work in an office. That's my wife. My wife. Where? Tell me where you are. Here. Where? I'm here. Where are you? One, One hand, hand found another. another, and the next moment, they were embracing, a single body. Kisses in search of kisses. At times, lost in midair, for they could not see each other's cheeks, eyes, lips. Cheeks. Sobbing, eyes, the doctor's lips. wife clung to her husband, Sobbing, as if she too had just been reunited. Sobbing, the doctor's wife clung to her husband, as if she too had just been reunited. Has Mom come? She'll come. Don't worry. She'll come. Here. Each person's real home 
is the place where they sleep. Help me, Doctor. Help me. Please forgive me. It was all my fault. I shouldn't have done what I did. Okay. These things happen in life. I shouldn't have done what I did either. Attention, attention. Your food has been left at the entrance as well as supplies for your hygiene and cleanliness. Attention, attention. Stop! Army! Halt! Turn back! I have orders to shoot! We have no wish to leave. What's going on? We urgently need antibiotics and other medicines. My orders are crystal clear. The only thing which we can allow in is food. If the infection gets worse, it could prove fatal. That isn't my affair. Then contact your superiors. Look here, blind man. Let me tell you something. Either the two of you get back to where you came from, or you will be shot. Would you like another biscuit? Thanks. <laughs> It had to be. The promised hell is about to begin. There are other wards. Go over there. The shouting had died down. Now a confusion of sounds was coming from the hallway. These were the blind, driven like sheep, bumping into each other, desperately waving their hands in the air like people drowning, as if being pushed from the outside by a bulldozer. And here, like a ship caught in a storm that has finally managed to reach port, they took possession of their berths, in this case their beds. Don't move. From now on, there's nothing you can do. Attention, attention, attention. The government regrets having been forced to exercise with all urgency what it considers to be its rightful duty to protect the population by all possible means in this present crisis provisionally known as the White Sickness. Dear God, how we miss having our sight, to be able to see, to see, to see. Even if it was only faint shadows, to stand before the mirror, see a dark, diffused patch, and to be able to say, that's my face. It's me. Oh. Thanks for coming. Tell me how you're feeling. Bad. Are you in pain? Yes and no. It's as if the leg were no longer mine. As if it were separated from my body. I can't explain. It's a strange feeling as if I were lying here, watching my leg hurt me. That's because you're feverish, probably. I know you can see. You're wrong. Don't try to deceive me. But don't worry. I won't breathe a word to anyone. Sleep. Don't you trust me? A thief. Of course I do. Then why don't you tell me the truth? We'll talk tomorrow. I'll go to sleep.
What's going on? A blind man. A blind man. He was there. He was there. I saw him. Switch on the floodlight. There's no one there, you fool. Right in the face. God. You finished him off. Get back! This is infectious! Four of you! Come out now and fetch your body! Move now! You'd better bury him. It's him. my fault. Possibly. <laughs> but this man is dead and must be buried. <laughs> I'm hungry. In their excitement, the blind internees, pushing each other, overcome by a vague sense of disquiet that they would not have time to define or explain, come to a halt. Get back! Get back! Army regrets having been forced to repress with weapons a seditious movement responsible for creating a situation of imminent risk. Where's the toilets? <coughs> what must this place look like? It's all white, luminous, resplendent. Can the floor, with all this, be white? Maybe the light and whiteness are giving off the awful stench. No paper. Blind. Blind. Dirty. Dirty than I can ever remember having been in my life. I shouldn't complain. I still have someone who doesn't mind cleaning me. Pigs. They're like pigs. What time is it? <laughs> what is it? Have... No, no, it isn't that. It isn't that. I forgot to wind up my watch. <laughs> Can I get you anything? Oh, oh, it, oh it's nothing. Oh. I just suddenly felt sad. The signs of conjunctivitis have almost gone. What a pity, I can't tell her. She'd be pleased. Silly, really. For what good would it do her to have beautiful, bright eyes such as these if there is no one to see them? We all have our moments of weakness. Just as well that we're still capable of weeping. Tears are often our salvation. There are times when we would die if we did not weep. There is no salvation for us. Who can tell? This blindness is not like any other. It might disappear as suddenly as it came. It'll come too late for those who have died. We all have to die. But not to be killed. And I have killed someone. Don't blame yourself. It was a question of circumstances. Here, we're all guilty and innocent. You're very kind. It's my bed. It's mine. Attention, attention, attention. 
The government regrets having been forced to exercise with all urgency what it considers to be its rightful duty to protect the population by all possible means in the present crisis, provisionally known as the White House. Get away. Calm down. Those on the steps should draw back a little. Clear the way. Stop pushing. You're meant to be helping each other. One of the new internees is an elderly man. Bald. With white hair and he's a black patch over one eye. I remember you telling me about him. Which eye? The left. It must be him. Move along! Move along! Keep going! Keep going! The patient with a black patch. What do you mean? Who are you? I am, or rather, I was, your ophthalmologist. Do you remember we were agreeing a date for your cataract operation? How did you recognize me? The voice is the sight of the person that cannot see. Yes. Who would have thought it, Doctor? that now there's no need for an operation. If there's a cure for this, we'll both need it. I remember you telling me, Doctor, that after my operation, I would no longer recognize the world in which I was living. <laughs> the panic out there is such, it won't be long before they start killing off folk the moment they've gone blind. They've already eliminated ten here. I found them. Do you remember me? I was wearing dark glasses. I remember you well. Despite my cataract, I remember that you are very pretty. Thank you. I want my mommy. 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 I was the first to go blind. I'm here with my wife. It only remains for me to introduce myself. I'm the doctor's wife. I have a radio. Music. Wonderful. Yes, but batteries don't last forever. Forever, no. We'll be able to listen to the news. And a little music. The blind internees slowly began gathering round, without pushing. Their eyes wide open. Tears simply flowing as from a fountain. utility of such hopes soon became manifest. Blindness was spreading, not like a sudden tide flooding everything, carrying all before it, but like an insidious infiltration of a thousand and one turbulent rivulets, which having slowly drenched the earth, suddenly submerged it completely. What about the, what about the city and the traffic? Traffic is in a state of chaos. 
A plane crashed and burst into flames. It was in perfect working order, as the black box, the only survivor, would later reveal. There's no one left who dares to drive a vehicle. Not even to get from A to B. The cars, lorries, motorbikes, even the bicycles are scattered chaotically throughout the entire city, abandoned where fear has gained the upper hand. That's how things are out there. I can, I can only speak of what I was able to see with my own eyes. Not with my eyes, because I only had one. I went blind when I was looking at my blind eye. I felt the inside of the empty orbit was inflamed, and I removed the patch to satisfy my curiosity, and just at that moment I went blind. That sounds like an allegory, the eye that refuses to acknowledge its own absence. I was in a hotel room with a man lying on top of me. I had gone to the museum looking at paintings. There was a picture of a cornfield with crows and cypress trees and a sun that gave the impression of having been made up of the fragments of other suns. Sounds like a Dutch painter. I think it was. But there was a drowning dog in it, already half submerged, poor creature. In that case, it must be by a Spanish painter. Could be, but I don't think so, because there was a woman as well with a child in her arms. Mothers and children are all too common in paintings. <laughs> True. And there were some men eating. There were thirteen men altogether. There was also a naked woman with fair hair inside a big shell that was floating on the sea. Masses of flowers around her. Obviously Italian. And a horse, stricken with terror, with its eyes about to pop out of their sockets. Exactly. Horses are like that. And what other pictures were there in your painting? Alas, I never managed to find out. I went blind just as I was looking at the horse. Fear can cause blindness. That could not be truer. We were already blind the moment we turned blind. Fear struck us blind. Fear will keep us blind. Who was speaking? Who is this? A blind man, just a blind man. For that is all we have here. Oh, switch on the radio. I hear a voice, said he, a young voice. Will you give me your hand, my kind young friend, and lead me in? I held out my hand, and the horrible, soft-spoken, eyeless creature gripped it in a moment like a vice. Now, boy, he said, take me into the captain. And I never heard a voice so cruel and cold and ugly as that blind man's. Lead me straight up to him. And when I'm in view, cry out, Here's a friend for you, Bill. If you don't, I'll do this. And with that he gave me a twitch that I thought would have made me faint. I forgot my terror of the captain, and as I opened the parlour door, cried out the words he had ordered in a trembling voice. The poor captain raised his eyes, and at one look the rum went out of him and left him staring sober. The expression of his face was not so much of terror as of mortal sickness. Now, Bill, sit where you are, said the beggar. If I can't see, I can hear a finger stirring. Business is business. Hold out your left hand. Boy, take his left hand by the wrist and bring it near to my right. I saw him pass something from the hollow of his hand into the palm of the captain's, which closed upon it instantly. And now that's done, said the blind man. And at the words, he suddenly left hold of me, and with incredible accuracy and nimbleness, skipped out of the parlour and into the road, where, as I still stood motionless, I could hear his stick go tap, tap, tapping into the distance. Be quiet, everyone, and keep your mouths shut. From today onwards, we shall take charge of the food. food. The food will now be sold. Anyone who wants to eat, 
must pay. How are we to pay? I said no one was to speak. This woman is up to something. If uh, you were to shoot her, there would be one mouth left to feed. If I could see her, she'd already have a bullet in her belly. Go back to your wards. Each ward will nominate two people to be in charge of collecting people's valuables, everything they possess. And they will take the lot to the third ward on the left, where we are. If you want some friendly advice, don't get any ideas about trying to cheat us. But I warn you to think again. Unless we feel that you've handed in enough, you will simply not get any food and be left to chew your banknotes and munch on your diamonds. And as for you, I won't forget your voice. Nor I your face. What's the matter? Nothing. My voice must have sounded strange, that's all, nothing else. How many of them are Ten there? Ten or so, maybe more. Something has to happen here. There's nothing we can do. Let's start collecting. We need a bag or something. Don't worry. I'll pay for us both. Now, let's see the riches. Take note. A braille typewriter. So there's a normal blind person amongst them. What do you think of this? Ah, uh, cheap imitation. This is good. There's nothing like dealing with honest people. Take this. Three are not enough. We used to receive four when the food was only for us. I'll have a container removed every time you complain. Now beat it. The worst thing would be if it got to be like that famous horse that died when it had already got out of the habit of eating. It wouldn't be so bad if when the horse dies, it doesn't know it's going to die. Go on, let me listen to the music. So as not to forget. The important thing is to know what's going on outside. Anyone who wants to listen to music can do it in their own head. It seems impossible that there should still be wind in this world and that the night should be black. They've got piles of food containers, as expected. Bring us women. Unless you bring us women, you don't eat. We're all at risk of dying of hunger. Both you and us. What are we going to do? I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. My wife will not be subjected to the shame of giving her body to strangers. For whatever. For dignity has no price. When someone starts making small concessions, in the end, life loses all meaning. And what meaning do you see in the situation? Starving, covered in filth up to our ears, ridden with lice, eaten by bedbugs, bitten by fleas. I too would prefer my wife not to go. But what I want serves no purpose. If we want to live... I've got no intention of changing my ideas. You can keep your woman for your exclusive use. We shall feed both you and her. I'd be interested to see how you feel then about your dignity. How the bread we bring you will taste. That's not the point. The point I'll is... I'll do whatever they do. You'll do as I say. Stop giving orders. That won't do much good here. You're as blind as I am. It's indecent. From now on, you don't eat. Take these off. Forgive me. I, I don't know what came over me. Don't get up. 
If you say nothing, it will be easy for me to understand. <laughs> what an unhappy lot we are. <sighs> I wanted it too. I wanted it too. You are not to blame. Be quiet. Let's all keep quiet. There are times when words serve no purpose. If only I too could weep, say everything with tears, not have to speak in order to be understood. I can see. I knew. At least, I'm not entirely sure, but I think I knew. It's a secret. Don't worry. I trust you. And so you should. I'd rather die than betray you. Lay there a little longer if you wish. No, I'm going back to our bed. Then I'll help you. I thought I could hear sobbing. An almost inaudible sound that could only have come from tears trickling slowly down to the corners of the mouth where they disappear to recommence the eternal cycle of inexplicable human joys and sorrows. The girl with dark glasses was about to remain alone. She was the one who ought to be consoled. For this reason, I was slow to remove my hand. How many women have you got in here? Seven. Oh, too bad. You just have to work all the harder. Don't be long. We're waiting for you. I'll go in front. They're coming. They're coming! Come in, girls. The first choice is mine, <coughs> as you well know. <coughs> yeah. Nice. Hey. You're a worthless whore. Who's next? I say, this one isn't bad at all. These fillies are pretty good. Take it easy, take it easy. No filly quite like this one's turned up before. This one is on the mature side, but could turn out to be quite a woman. I'm hanging on to these two. When I finish with them, I'll pass them on to the rest of you. Shut up, you whores. These bitches are all the same. They always have to start yelling. Jealous, Mrs. I'll be dealing with you next. I say, boys, you can come and get this one, but treat her nicely, for I may need her again. I'm all yours. Put your head down. There. No. I'll give you a good thrashing, and nobody gets any food. Aren't you afraid I might bite you off? I have my hands around your neck. I recognize your voice. And I recognize your face. You're blind. Can't see me. That voice can only have one face. Suck me and forget the chit-chat. She's dead. Who's there? Where should we take her? To the ward. The doctor and the old man with the black eye patch bring back the food but don't see, can't see, six naked women and the corpse of the old woman stretched on her bed, cleaner than she's ever been in all her life, while another woman is washing her companions, one by one, and then herself. Enjoy yourself, girls. Those seven were worth fourteen. 
It's true that one of them was no great shakes. There are no longer seven of us. <laughs> As one of you vamooshed. She didn't vamoose, she died. Well, your luck will have to work much harder next time. Well, it wasn't much of a loss. She was no great shakes. That's no way to talk of a lady. It's indecent, a lack of respect, to refer to a woman like that. Just because her tits weren't in the right place and she had no words to speak of. And then what happened? I'll tell you the rest of the story later. I won't be long, I'm coming straight back. We're off to the other war to our other girlfriends. More fillies. I lose the barrier. In my hand, scissors. How he throws his head back as he takes his pleasure, offering me his neck. <laughs> Be quiet. Say nothing. They've killed him. It must have been that whore who was with him. And we've got to get her. Keep calm. Don't lose your nerve. We'll get to the bottom of this matter. Remember what I said the other day? That I'd never forget his face. And from now on, think about what I'm telling you, for I won't forget your faces either. You'll pay dearly for this outrage. You neither know who I am or where I've come from. Your voice is unmistakable. You need only utter one word in my presence. And you're dead. The other fellow said the same thing, and now he's a corpse. But I'm not a blind man like him or you. When you lot turned blind, I already knew everything about this world. You know nothing about my blindness. You're not blind. You can't fool me. Well, perhaps I'm the blindest of all. I've already killed, and I'll kill again if I have to. You'll die first. From today onwards, there will be no more food, even if you were all to come offering on a tray the three holes you were born with. Bitch! Bitches are neither men nor women. They're bitches. And you now know what they're worth. Old. And a murderess. <laughs> what happened? They said a man was killed. Yes. I killed him. Why? Someone had to do it. You know there's going to be a battle. A war. The blind are always at war. Always have been at war. And what about the food? We'll fetch it. They won't dare come now. Hey! What's the delay? What's happened to our food? We haven't eaten for two days! It's a new sergeant. I wonder what life is like out there. The lights have gone out. Now you're as blind as the rest of us. I'll wait for the sun to come up. The army searchlight's out. The city's in complete darkness. The food hasn't come. The food won't come. The thugs have hoarded the lot. Let's go and get our food. They've barricaded the entrance with four beds stacked on top of each other. Anyone who's going to die is already dead and doesn't know it. That's enough of your foolish talk. Are you going as well? I'd rather you didn't. And why not? You're young. In this place, age is of no account, nor sex. Therefore, don't forget the women. No, I won't forget. Women are born again in one another. The respectable are reborn as whores. Whores are reborn as respectable women. Charge! The blind inmates advance like archangels, surrounded by their own splendor. By now they are weak and can scarcely hold their lances. Like someone who carried a cross on his back and now has to wait to be raised up onto it. 
Probably no one has noticed to this day how absolutely terrible are the cries of the blind. They appear to be shouting for no good reason. We want to tell them to be quiet and then end up shouting ourselves. All that's wanting is for us to be blind too. But that day will come. Get back! Get back! Get back! A tiny dagger of light, as bright as the sharp point of a pair of scissors. Soldiers are there. Better to be shot than burnt to death. Please, you've got to let us out. The place is on fire. We can't stay here. Don't shoot, please. Oh, they've gone. There's nobody in here. We're shot down by blindness. We're free. Come on, everybody, get out. Now. This'll do. It's an electrical shop. There's fridges and washing machines, microwave ovens and stuff. Rest here. I'm going to look for some food. Please, whatever happens, don't leave this place. And if you should be turned out, stay together near the door until I get back. They keep very close to the buildings with their arms stretched out before them. They're constantly bumping into each other like ants on a trail. But when this happens, no one protests. Nor do they have to say anything. One of the families moves away from the wall, advances along the wall opposite in the other direction, and thus they proceed and carry on until the next encounter. Now and then they stop, sniff in doorways, in the hope of catching the smell of food. Be careful, there might be other bits of glass about. There must be something. <laughs> the surrounding space, a diffuse sphere, as luminous as a star glimmering through the mist. Dear God, light exists and I have eyes to see. Praised be light. <laughs> Who's eating sausage around here? You would expect people to take shelter. Eyes are also needed to see this picture. A woman laden with plastic bags going along a rain-drenched street amidst rotting litter and human and animal excrement. Cars and lorries abandoned any old how, blocking the main thoroughfare. Some of the vehicles with their tires already surrounded by grass and the blind the blind, open-mouthed and staring up at the white sky. It seems incredible that rain should fall from such a sky. The dogs gathered round her, sniffed at the bags, but without much conviction, as if their hour for eating had passed. One of them licks her face, 
Perhaps it has been used to drying tears ever since it was a puppy. The woman strokes its head, runs her hand down its drenched back, and she weeps with the rest of her tears, embracing the dog. The dogs gradually left her. Something distracted them on the way, or they are familiar with the district and are reluctant to stray too far. Only the dog that has dried her tears accompanied the person who had wept them. What's the world like these days? They go around like ghosts. This must be what it means to be a ghost. Being certain that life exists because your four senses say so. And yet unable to see it. Are there lots of cars out there? It's like a cemetery. I used to be able to go up and down these stairs with my eyes closed. Dearest daughter, you've come home. Come in. Withered flowers. You and your husband can sleep in my parents' bed. Compared with you, I'm simply an ignorant girl. But in my opinion, we're already dead. We're blind because we're dead. Or if you would prefer me to put it another way, we're dead because we're blind. It comes to the same thing. Before when we could still see, there were also blind people. Few in comparison. The feelings in use were those of someone who could see. Therefore, blind people felt with the feelings of others, not as the blind people they were. Now, certainly what's emerging are the real feelings of the blind, and we're still only at the beginning. For the moment, we still live on the memory of what we felt. You don't need eyes to know what life has become today. What do you think I should do? Come to our house. And what about the others? The same goes for them. But it's you I most care about. Perhaps because you've become almost like a sister. Perhaps because my husband slept with you. Forgive me. It's not a crime that calls for pardon. There must be a government. We're going back to being primitive hordes. With the difference that we are not a few thousand men and women in an immense unspoiled nature, but thousands of millions in an uprooted, exhausted world. Where's your home? I have no home of my own. I live alone in a room. Have you no family? No family whatsoever. Unless my parents turn up. I should be on my own, just like you. I'm going to come with you, if that's all right. I've put a lock of hair on the door handle. A symbol that nearly always signified death has become a sign of life. She wanted to keep all of them close to her. Not in the usual fragile Indian file, which can be broken at any moment. They only needed to encounter a more numerous or more aggressive group and it would be like a steamer at sea cutting in two a sailing boat that happened to cross its path. We know the consequences of such accidents. Shipwrecks, disasters, people drowned, futile cries for help in that vast expanse of water, the steamer already sailing on ahead, not even aware of the collision. This is what would happen to this group, a blind person here, another there, lost in the disordered currents of the other blind people. 
like the waves of the sea that never stop, and do not know where they are going. Something that was off. I don't feel a thing. Did the food upset you? I feel that my own living body is being shaken by dogs. This is it. They're eating our dog. How stupid of me. Home. Nothing. Daydreams. Time passes. Inside us, there is something that has no name. You can't know. I'm not a queen. I'm simply the one who was born to see this. This dream is not mine, they said. But the dream replied, you do not yet know your dreams. In this way, the girl with the dark glasses came to find out who the old man with the black eye patch was, lying there asleep two paces away. In this way, he thought he knew who she was. He merely thought he did. It is not enough for dreams to be reciprocal in order to be the same. Oh, don't let it stop. Here, help me. Take off your clothes. It doesn't matter. Perhaps in the building opposite, behind those closed windows, some blind people, men and women, remember the time when, like now, they last saw rain falling from the sky. They cannot imagine that there are, moreover, three naked women out there, as naked as when they came into the world. They seem to be mad. They must be mad. Perhaps we are unable to see this the most beautiful and glorious thing that has happened in the history of the city. A sheet of foam flows from the floor of the balcony. If only I could go with it, falling interminably, clean, purified, naked. Am I ugly? Only God sees us. You'll never be ugly. And I? You're dirty and skinny like her, but not as pretty, but more than me. You are beautiful. I've dreamt of you twice. How old are you? Getting on for fifty. Like my mother. And her. Is she still beautiful? She was more beautiful once. That's what happens to all of us. We were all more beautiful once. You were never more beautiful. Words are like that. They deceive. They pile up. It seems they don't know where to go, and suddenly, because of two or three or four that suddenly come out simple in themselves, a personal pronoun, an adverb, a verb, an adjective, we have the excitement of seeing them coming irresistibly to the surface through the skin and the eyes, and upsetting the composure of our feelings, sometimes the nerves that cannot bear it any longer. They put up with a great deal. They put up with everything. It was as if they were wearing armour, we might say. The doctor's wife has nerves of steel, and yet the doctor's wife is reduced to tears because of a personal pronoun, an adverb, a verb, an adjective, mere grammatical categories, mere labels, just like the two women, the others, indefinite pronouns. They, too, are crying. They embrace the woman of the whole sentence, three graces beneath the falling rain. These are moments that cannot last forever. 
I'm cold. What floor did you live on? The thirds. Who is it? What do you want? I used to live in this flat. Ah. Well, come in. I'm a writer. How have you managed since the outbreak of the epidemic? We came out of internment only three days ago. Was it hard? Worse than that. Ah, horrible. You're a writer. You have an obligation to no words. Therefore, you know that adjectives are no use to us. If a person kills another, for example, it'd be better to state this fact openly, directly, and to trust that the horror of the act in itself is so shocking there's no need for us to say it was horrible. Do you mean that we have more words than we need? No, I mean we have too few feelings, or that we have them, but have ceased to use the words they express, and so we lose them. I can see. Have you recovered your sight? I suppose I'm the only person who's never lost it. Well, that means that you saw everything that's happened. How many people were in the quarantine? Nearly 300. Forgive me. Suddenly everything I've been writing about since we turned blind, my family and I, strikes me as being ridiculous. The flat is yours. I'm only passing through. Don't lose yourself. Don't let yourself be lost. These were unexpected, enigmatic words that did not seem to fit the occasion. No. I'm very sorry, old boy, but your condition has no known cure. If you want me to give you one last piece of advice, cling to the old saying. They were right when they said that patience is good for the eyes. We are in the place where miracles used to be performed. And perhaps it's like that. Perhaps it really doesn't know. You speak as if you too were blind. I am blind. With your blindness. Perhaps I might be able to see better if there were more of us who could see. Time is coming to an end. Let's open our eyes. But I want to see. There are more dead in the road than usual. Who knows whether my parents are not among them. It's a time-honored custom to pass by the dead without seeing them. As long as I can, I'll keep on hoping. Hoping to find my parents. Hoping the boy's mother will turn up. You forgot to speak of the hope we all have, of regaining our sight. It's mad to cling to such hopes. Without such hopes, I would have already given up. By modern criteria, I am now an old man and one-eyed, as well as being blind. Have you nothing else to say against yourself? Well, you can't imagine how the list of self-recriminations grows with advancing age. I'm young, and have my fair share already. You haven't done anything really bad yet. How do you know, if you've never lived with me? You're right. I have never lived with you. Why do you repeat my words in that tone of voice? What tone of voice? That one. All I said was that I have never lived with you. Come on. Come on, don't pretend you don't understand. Let's return to hopes. All right. The other example of hope which I refuse to give you is this. The monstrous wish of never regaining our sight. Why? So we can go on living as we are. Do you mean altogether? Or just you and me? Don't make me answer, please. If you were only a man, you could avoid answering like all others. But you yourself said that you are an old man. And old men, if longevity has any sense at all, should not avert their face from the truth. Answer me. 
with you. And why do you want to live with me? Do you want me to tell you in front of everybody? We've done the dirtiest, ugliest, most repulsive things together. What you can tell me cannot possibly be worse. All right, if you insist, let it be. Because the man I still am loves the woman you are. Was it so very difficult to make a declaration of love? At my age, people fear ridicule. You were not ridiculous. Let's forget it, please. I've no intention of forgetting it or of letting you forget it either. It's nonsense. You forced it out of me. Don't say anything you may regret later. If I'm sincere today, what does it matter if I regret it tomorrow? Please stop. You want to live with me? And I want to live with you. You're mad. It's madness. You don't love me. What's this about loving? I never loved anyone. I just went to bed with men. I love you enough to want to be with you. And that is the first time I've ever said that to anyone. You would not have said that to me either if you had met me somewhere before. An elderly man, half bald, with white hair, with a patch over one eye and a cataract in the other. Life decides these things. I'm going to go back to the underground food store at the supermarket. I'm coming with you. Where is everybody? I don't understand what's going to. Where did they all go? There were loads of people here. Bad smell in here. For me, it's easier. I can't see them. You stay here, I'll be right back. <coughs> they did. They did. Give me your hand. For the first time since the onset of blindness, it was the doctor who guided his wife. Just get me out of here, please. Just get me out. Oh. No, I only saw will of the wisps around the door. They clung there and danced around and didn't let go. A church. If I could just lie down for a while. There's six steps. That's right. You won't believe me if I tell you what I see. All the images in this church have their eyes covered. There's a statue of a man nailed to the cross with a white bandage covering his eyes. And next to him, there's a woman, and her eyes are also covered with a white bandage. There's only one woman who doesn't have her eyes covered. And that's because they've been gouged out, and she's carrying them on a silver tray. And another man with a spear, standing over a fallen man with horns and cloven feet. And both have their eyes covered. I wonder why. Images see with the eyes of those who see them. Only now, blindness is the lot of everyone. You can still see. I'll see less and less all the time. Even though I might not lose my eyesight, I shall become more and more blind because I shall have no one to see me. I've fallen asleep. It's all dark. I've passed from one blindness to another. I lived in the blindness of light. Now I live in the blindness of darkness. What's the matter? I am blind. Don't worry, we're all blind. And there's nothing we can do about it. Don't think about it. I can see! I can see! I can see! Like before. Are there no traces of whiteness? Nothing at all. Blind but seeing. Blind people who can see but do not see. <laughs> I think I can see. Look at me. I'm the man you said you were going to live with. I know you. You are the man I am living with. I can see. What can you see? They can see. Can you see me? 
The doctor's wife got up and went to the window. She looked down at the street, full of rubbish, at the shouting, singing people. Then she lifted her head up to the sky and saw everything white. It's my turn, she thought. Fear made her quickly lower her eyes. The city was still there. That was Blindness by José Saramago, translated by Giovanni Pontiero and adapted by Matt Thompson. The Doctor's Wife was played by Josefina Gabrielle, The Girl in Dark Glasses by Madeleine Worrell, The Doctor by Anthony Howell, The Driver by Michael Cannon, The Driver's Wife by Pat Borthwick, The Car Thief by Stuart Porter, The Sergeant by Bob Kane, The Old Man with the Eye Patch was Peter Spruill, The Gang Leader was Joe Montana, and the gang lackey, David Webster. The writer was John Rowe, and the young boy, Sean Gardner. The piano music was Bach's Siciliano in G minor, transcribed and played by Wilhelm Kempf. Sound design was by Joe Aitchison. Blindness was directed by Matt Thompson, and was a Loftus production for BBC Radio 3. Uploaded by Cecily Parsley.